in this episode, two generations will come together to look at a statement and confess if they resonate with it. Hi, Josh. Hey, Annabelle. <laughs> Let's yap. <yeah. laughs> Let's yap. <laughs> All right. I have Google myself just to see what comes up. So many times. Every day. Really? No, not every day, but like, have you not done it before? No, never. Why? But I feel like I'm a very private person and yeah, I'm not like on social media like 24-7, like some influencer or something. La. So I don't think like, if I, even if I Google myself, I don't think anything will come up. No, because I'm the kind of person, right? I will Google myself, my, my first name, my surname, my full name, then I'll Google my family, then I'll Google my friends. And then like, there was this one time I Googled my teachers and I found her LinkedIn. Yeah, and I legit signed up to LinkedIn so I could see her account. But why? What? Why not? You're stalking what? That's crazy. Now, see, the, the generation gap is here. <laughs> I have experienced a funny or awkward moment during a church gathering. Funny or awkward? Funny or awkward moment. Damn, that's a lot, bro. It's like, if you want to compile it, There'll be like a... From here until go to Joho. <laughs> legit. Nah, nah, nah. More than that, bro. It's like the Red Sea, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have a, way too many. But, you know, in a way, I feel like I've erased these awkward moments from my head as like a trauma response. Because like, I'm like, oh, it was too bad. I don't want to remember it, right? But because, um, you know, in Narrow Street, we have this thing called hype. So it's kind of like pre-service games. You remember that during the 30th anniversary? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's what we do in Narrow Street, but on a smaller scale, right? So I'm like one of the... I do hype lah. So I remember the first time I did hype, right? I went up on stage. I introduced myself. Then throughout the whole thing, right? I just stood in the corner because my partner at the time was um one of my like leaders. Uh, he was like doing all talking. He was like, oh my gosh, guys. So then we're doing this and then I'm just there like... So it was a game where they had to like stay in a position. So I'll be doing 10... Nine, eight, seven. I'll just stand there, and it was like, I, it's on YouTube, you know. It's oh, on YouTube because no. back then they were doing live streaming. My, I went home. My mother told me, "Oh well, I watched your video on YouTube. Ah, huh? not bad." <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I get it. I think I have a, I have a quite similar story as well. I think this, this was um, during this year. We had like a leg, like our legacy camp, our CC people. We have our legacy camp. Um, and I was doing MCing lah. <laughs> I was I was just there being my loudest. But this was on the third day, on the third day of camp, last day. Voice gone. Everyone's dead. Everyone's dead. Voice gone. Everyone's uh, like, they just yeah, want to go yeah. home and sleep, man. Eh? Yeah. And I was just hyping, and then there was just everyone just there. It's like, yeah, yeah. And I was just in front of them, like, please give me a response. No, cause you're oh, you're like, oh my gosh, guys, how are you all doing today? And I just yeah. like. It's just, it's just silence. Yeah, right? it's just silence. That's why I can never do like MC or like hype on like the last day of camp because it's everyone is dead. Everyone is dead, really. But that that was like my fondest memory. I love that, you know. But we had such a great revival during yeah, yeah. Legacy Camp. Yeah. Mm. You guys went to like the beach, right? Yeah, <gasps> Bayou Beach. How was it? Go to spot. It was, it was goaded. It was goaded. Even though it's like run down, but any place with Jesus, hey. it's a five star resort. Let's go to the next question, Josh. Alright, our next question. I have worried that I'm not living up to my own expectation. Ooh. Um, by the way, I switch uh, majors. I switch into um, international business and global logistics. Oh my god! Basically, Shopee lah. Shopee? <laughs> yeah, Shopee. <laughs> Don't ask me where your Shopee package is. But I, I have no idea. Yeah, I just order it. I, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I switch um, different path. And I... I'm right now I'm very kind of blindsided to to what is the future of um wherever I'm going. Um and this is something that I've talked to a lot of my friends about. Um and one of the things that um really comforts me is like through all of this we we just need to have that trust in God that even though we plan all of this out, it wouldn't be certain that it would happen. So what we need to do is just have that faith that whatever he's doing is good for you, you Yay, know? Amen. amen. to that, you know? Amen. And I've, I've just been trusting it. Even though I re- I'm really want to plan it out, I just don't know where I'm going. And I just pray that the Lord just leads me to somewhere that is going to make me more closer to him. And somewhere is... It's just good. Yeah, I feel like the fact that you're trusting him is already you growing closer to him. Yeah. yeah. So you think great. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. How about you? How about you? What's the question? 
Uh, <laughs> the question is, um, have you worried uh, that I'm not living up to my own expectations? Yeah, definitely. Like, because especially when I was in primary school, I was the very like, um, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh? Like, the very quai quai student, uh, the one always gets straight A's, one, uh, a perfectionist, uh, basically. A nerd, lah. No, I have friends, okay. <laughs> yeah, but then I was like super like, I was really pressuring on myself. I really wanted to like um, be a perfectionist. Then for me, like it carried on when I was into secondary, even though it like subdued a bit. But even when I was in secondary, it was really bad. I remember I got a 89 on my maths test. And then I was so like distraught by that. Because really? it's one month away from an A star, you know, 90s and A star. Oh. So I was so sad, you know. I was like, I look at people and I start crying, you know. In class, I think my teacher felt bad for me because he gave me the extra mark to get to an A star. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you trip your teacher. No, it's not me. <laughs> <miss, laughs> no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, um, I mean, have I been afraid that I'm not living automatic? Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like now, right, um, I don't know what happened, uh, but I think. I've just like grown a lot more and I'm like ver- a lot less worried about whether or not I'm living up to my expectations, right? Because like, I- even last year, I was really like stressed. Oh, I wonder if I'm... Because um, like even my new school now is very competitive. Everyone wants to get high, right? High grades. So I was always very like stressed. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this or not. Then I was... There was still that part of me that was very unsure. Part of me that was like... I think I'm going to fail. I don't think I can do this. But then I think when I came into like end of last year and beginning of this year, I think like, I don't know what happened, but I think God really just worked so strongly in my life, which is weird because that was the season, season of my life where I felt very distant from God. But now that I'm looking back, I feel like I see that really in that moment where I felt so far away, that's when he worked the most. And that's when he really like helped me to mature and helped me to like, like right now, like I had my mocks, you know, like uh, in June. But like when I was having my mocks, I started a new K drama. So I was really, <laughs> so I really felt like really stress free. You know, I I felt like yeah, maybe in the future I'll definitely have these expectations I set for myself. But that obviously there's expectations, right? Because there's goals you want to hit. But like I'm not so worried about it because I know that I'm okay. I know that God's there for me. And yeah, should we close it with that? Let's close it with that. You know. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> hey, Elise. Hey, Cass. Are you ready to answer some questions? I think I am. All right, let's go. I have stayed up all night binge watching a show. Have you done that? I think I have, lah. I think like maybe not my maybe not my proudest moment. Okay, not like all night though. Maybe like five. Got five. In the morning. Not, that's that's not the whole night. It's not no. like a whole. It's not like an all night though, lah. Yeah. But it's, I stayed up pretty late, lah, to binge watch. <laughs> How about you? Um. Three, I think, is my max. Three. Because I need to get up very early. That's true. So, so that's true. I get up about five. That's so the, if I sleep at three, it's still bad. Yeah. I think that's the perks of being a student still. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can afford I to agree. wake up. I think we don't have a full-time job. Yes. So it's, you can afford to do that. Because you suffer the next day when you're older. Yeah. And you try to sleep with minimal sleep. Uh, uh, it doesn't work. Coffee I can't that. save you. I dread well. that. Yeah. Yeah. But so it's okay. don't grow up. I'm trying not to, man. <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> okay. I have created a vision board or a mood board for fun dreaming about future plans or goals I don't think I've planned out my life so I know a lot of people like create their wedding on a mood yeah. board or, a, or whatever board it is but no I've not really planned my life that way because my personal belief is that I try to leave everything in God's hands so I don't plan because every time I plan God has kind of screwed up my plans uh, sorry God um, but it's really <laughs> it's true <laughs> it's, it really, it's, a Christian, really it's a Christian response but oh, it's true thanks, thanks. Yeah, I try, is. we're yeah. in church so I try we are in yeah. church <laughs> so it's, we, we give grace I think yes how about yeah. you um, I, I don't think I'm much of a planning person like I feel like I'm I mean to some extent I am but definitely not create a vision but I feel like the, the idea of having to do that is like a you have to plan for that in itself yeah. and I'm like no la, it's too much effort. Unnecessary stress. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I think I'm more of a go with the flow person. But obviously there is like planning la. Yeah. But no, definitely not. For not. me, if I have a board that becomes a KPI. Yes. And then precisely, I need to, to hit the KPI. And then I stress out even more. Yes. And it doesn't make sense. I have felt insecure about my appearance. This is actually an easy one for me because it's a clear yes for me. Yeah. I've been insecure about my appearance literally my whole life. Yeah. And I struggled with that throughout my childhood. 
And I always say that um, my childhood was actually my hardest point of my life. I actually enjoy being an adult now because oh, really? I don't have that insecurity anymore. Yeah, um, that's good. Uh, that's good to know. And and you want to know the answer? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Amen, man. That's the that's the only acceptable answer. Would I you think. like the elaborated okay, yeah. answer? Yeah, sure, of course, definitely. <laughs> um, so. You know, I was really, really struggling with my appearance and whenever um, I would go out, I see people and obviously people dress up nicer yeah. and people had, you know, what was skinnier than me. Yeah. Right. And it was always a struggle because I could never wear the clothes I wanted to wear. I I could never fit into the things that I wanted to wear. And so it was really a downer for me and I used to feel super insecure. Yeah. And on top of that, you know, you always have friends who would tease you and, you know, all these kind of things. And... It, it was tough. It was really, really tough. And back then, I think, maybe my parents didn't understand. Um, my friends didn't understand. My siblings didn't understand. And so I really felt like I was alone, you know, going through it. But really, it was, if there is one thing that saved me, one person who saved me, it was God. It was Jesus. And He really helped me see that the way the world sees beauty is not the way that He sees beauty. Psalm 139 is really, really one of my anchoring passages, yeah. um, which reminds me that God knew me before He, before I was born. And before I ever thought anything of myself, He already knew that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And that's, that's so all that, that mattered. Uh, so his true. view of me, Amen. not anyone Amen else's. Amen yeah. 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 Okay. Now well. I've, I've gone on about myself. <laughs> yeah. I now think, it's your turn. I think you worded it out perfectly though. I mean, like, I think, yeah, definitely. Maybe like on the other end of it, maybe I feel like all my life it's been like, oh, your mother, she was so skinny. And people are like, oh, that's a good thing. But you know, like, it's like a very Asian thing. Maybe people are like, no, you have to be like, like, got a bit of meat. Yeah, a bit of meat. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how to phrase it. You phrase it really well. A bit of meat. And it's like, oh yeah. And then like, some, some people be like, oh, but you're so skinny. Like, I'm jealous. And I'm like, no, it's, it's not like, yeah, I think because it's like there, there's like a lot of obviously there's a lot of like opinions going around and like I think for the longest time I wasn't really affected by it but I think obviously as you grow older and you like you said like you, you see things you go out and you see people it, it can be uh, like a factor that affects you right but yeah I think mean, you worded it perfectly I don't think I have to say anything to that already like really, Jesus is always the answer yeah and I think like really like when, when people say like we are creating God's image right I think that's like the the thing that's the really most beautiful thing. Yeah. That we don't have to um second doubt or second question. Yeah. Yeah. And like I think that's where like my sort of confidence comes from as well. Yeah. I have considered quiet quitting or doing the bare minimum at work or school because of burnout. I have been burnt out actually yeah. multiple times. Uh at work, in leadership. Um, but I still just push myself to do it. Uh yeah. semi killing myself in the process, yes. But um, I can't do the bare minimum. Um, I think it's because I'm very competitive as a person. I'm also very KPI driven, as we've established yes. earlier. KPI yes, KPI driven. Uh, so, so I can't. I can't do bare minimum. No. Um, you know, it says the, there's a passage that says, um, "Do everything as if you're working for the Lord." Yeah. Right. Um, and I hold that very dearly to my heart in everything that I do. So it's a combination of both: a sense of responsibility as well as knowing that I'm yeah. working for God. And it's yeah. God that sees me working, not my boss. I think, I think yeah, there are moments, uh, in, I think not, in all things, uh, I guess, um, just through our life, where I feel like I do sort of shut off because, yeah, yeah I can get overwhelming. I think it's, I'm sort of in a journey of learning how to sort of manage yeah. that sort of um, overwhelming sort of um, feeding and, and, and um, just things that are going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think short answer is yes, but it's it's always uh, I I do always go back um after each each time I guess that happens and I think I go back to God and I really I mean it's a question so super question yeah but I think yeah there are times I go back and I'm like I feel like I keep falling to the same cycle and I I tell God that and I think I just give that to Him and I like I think what you said like really just doing everything to God until God until with excellence and all that I think that's what um motivates me to do better the next time yeah um but yeah. I think that's that's my answer. I have lied about my age before. I don't think I've ever lied about my age before. I don't think so. Yeah. Have you? I I have. Maybe because like when you go to a mall alone and like 13 years old, some random person asks you how old you are. 
you don't want to say you're 13, you know, safety, safety procedures, safety procedures. But why would you be in the mall alone at 13 years old? Nothing to do at home. Fair enough. I've played a video game for hours without realizing how much time has passed. Yeah, honestly, that has happened way too many times now. I think I've been playing at like, start at like 10. Like, what do you play? Uh, Valorant. Okay. And then Honor of Kings. And I play until like 3, 4 a.m. I can't open up my eyes anymore. I'm just sitting there realizing I've wasted like five, six hours. I, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time, to be honest. I think I've done the same, but that it's been years since I've been able to do that. That's... Uh, that sounds depressing now that I talk about it. <laughs> yeah, like when you like take a step back and you think about it, right? You're spending so much time playing a game at l- late into the night, you know. You just like it doesn't it doesn't seem like someone joyful would do. Yeah. I, I I think where I am at now, I do cherish and miss those moments, to be very honest. Um the fact that you no know, sometimes I do, but nowadays I stretch it maybe to twelve. But then it's already too tiring for me. But yeah, I mean, I've played games up to oof, 5, 6 a.m. before, back then. But yeah. So then do you actually just sleep or you just like pull on night third, just go back to life? Dif- it depends. Uh, there, there are times where you just go on, go at breakfast and then continue the day. Uh, uh, but sometimes you sleep and then you wake up at like 12, something like that. Yeah. S- surprisingly enjoyable, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. It like, is. You, I, you think you get boring if you do it so much? No, no, really? no, it's just a different game. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've heard of what Honor, Honor, Honor of, of Kings, Kings and Valor. I've never really played it yet, but we'll see. Maybe one day. Mm, one day. <laughs> Return to the video game scene. Yeah, enlighten the I know, young people. I know. I know. Okay, next one. I have pretended to understand a reference or meme when I didn't. I like to think of myself as someone who understands memes. But, you know, for your generation, you know, we grew up with... Okay, you grew up with memes. We, we, we were there when memes were born, if that makes sense. Um, but I don't think I will ever pretend to understand a meme. If I don't, I'll probably go and search it on, online and say, what, what, you know, what, what, what is this meme in particular? As a person from this current generation, I also don't really understand what half the memes are doing. Like... Honestly, the memes used to be very creative and enjoyable. Now now it's just like a piece of toast and an egg. It's like, well, what's going on, guys? Has our humor level dropped so far now that we, we find this enjoyable? Somehow, I still feel like, you know, the, the best memes are the ones where you just look at it and you, you get the reference without needing to go and look what the reference is. I felt pressure to conform to societal expectations. I think mm. in some senses, yeah. there, It's just kind of how life is, I, I feel. It's like, you go to school, you go through life, there are some things that you're expected to do. Like, currently, I'm expected not to flip this table and, like, run off, you know? Why? Society- Why is there a societal pressure? It's just an expectation. Really? It's, yeah. Because if I, it would be... It would not fit, like, current, current expectations for someone of my age or, or for if you were to flip the table, throw a mic and walk off. Yeah. It also wouldn't be exactly very, you know, correct in a sense, I guess. I think a lot of times in terms of school, there's a lot of these like bystander effect where you see something, you know it's wrong, but to some extent you can't really do anything to change it, even if you're signed up for it. So you just accept it and walk off. Like in my school, some people cut line, uh, basic things, cut line, don't pay, they just take the food and walk. Like in society, it's somewhat common now. It's like socially accepted kind of thing. But in terms of morality, it's basic human decency. If someone is lining up, you you don't you shouldn't go cut in front of them. And if, you know, people are work hard to prepare the food, you shouldn't just take it and go. Sure. Right? It's, sure. But I would say that because you don't do the same thing, you're not conforming to these societal pressures. Would that be fair to say? Because that's your, your stand, right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't do what, what people are finding it acceptable now. But I think the action of not doing anything and not trying to stop them is also kind of conforming because you're kind of just letting it happen, you know? If we're not, if you're not trying to change it, then you're accepting it and you're kind of agreeing agreeing with it. I I, I get what you're saying. Basically, if you know, when people, the when good people say nothing, the evil evil yeah, triumphs. Something exactly. like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think there are distinctions between the two, but not partaking is already one step, right? I I I I don't think you should. If if you feel like you're beating yourself up over it for not saying something, um, I don't know. 
if there's something you can report or something, I don't know, maybe. But I mean, I, not conforming is one, 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 one step there already, I guess. And do you think that we should try and take a stand? Because if not conforming is correct thing, then it's just standing by. Oh, is that gonna yeah, be a thing? Yeah, I, I, I know. What I mean, I, I don't. I, I honestly don't know. Um, it's a tough question because uh, there's a lot of things that is wrong, right? And I guess it would take forever to 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 say everything yeah, that you feel is wrong in the world. Change you know the what I mean? World. Yeah. Um, but I guess in that's why I feel like in your own small way if for example out of all your friends everyone is doing it and you alone are not doing it that already itself is something I feel worth worth championing I guess even if you don't voice out and speak against other people that's it for this episode anything to confess if you have a confession comment down below